my channel. Thank you so much for being here and I appreciate your time. Um, please pay no attention to my nails. They are kind of jack well, really jacked up right now. They're really grown out. And I'm sure as all of you people who get your nails done know that because of the social distancing, I haven't been to the nail salon in probably four or five weeks at this point. So I am waiting for my nail kit to come and Hopefully, by the time it gets here, um, I will be able to have my nails done. I might even film it. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm going to start doing my nails. But getting back on topic, this video is going to be about me giving my thoughts on the new Maki series on Netflix, um, produced, I think, written and maybe directed by uh, Kenya Burris, um, as well as me speaking about Insecure Episode 2. Um, so let's get right into it. So first, I'm going to talk about Black. AF or black and I'm gonna keep it very, very real I don't like the show I don't really understand what the overall message is of the show I don't really um understand what he well should I say not use the word understand I do understand what he's trying to do he's obviously trying to represent you know affluent black American life um black black Americans that are wealthy, that have a uh, disposable income, that can rent out a private island and have their children wearing Gucci down every single day, right? As they drop them off at their private school or the nanny drops them off at their private school. Like he's trying to show that there are wealthy black folks that don't, money is not even a thing. And uh, there is just it's just normal for them like he's trying to bring some normalcy to probably what his actual life is like I, I suppose but to me he could have done that better like there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with representing that like there are black Americans who absolutely have that lifestyle yes there are definitely extremely wealthy black Americans that um, live like him however I don't feel like he really did a good job framing the context well and so it's kind of just like what is this like what is your point like okay you're rich you're the cool parents your kids don't really live by guidelines and structure and hence they're kind of disrespectful like the whole cursing at your parents thing was really weird and i don't mean like using a cuss word around your parents like when you get to a certain age like I'm 27 years old I have cursed around my mom but I've never cursed at my mom or called my mom a name and I don't get along with my father my father is not in my life I don't care for him and yet even still I've never called my father a or told my father you're being a so uh that was extremely weird to me I feel like the show was written for was written or necessarily written from well assimilated black americans who are disconnected because of their their wealth and their money and have therefore attained proximity to whiteness through their income level um and so now they kind of live in this space where you know they have what white people have and they can be in the same spaces as white people um assuming that all white people are rich but you know what I mean? They they have graduated to the point where now they can be in these spaces, and you know they can uh, drive these cars and wear these 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 designers, um, but they're not still not white, and then they don't have the typical black struggles that the majority of Black Americans do, and so they're not able to fit in with those black. So I feel like that's kind of the vein that he's in and that's fine too if you're gonna tell that story that's fine but it's not done well and then getting to the mockumentary sort of uh way that he's telling the story that wasn't even done well because you have all these camera all these camera tricks you know if you know anything about production like if you're a production i'm, I'm, a, I'm a production student so if you know anything remotely about the process of filming whether it's for television or movies oftentimes they will have multiple cameras within a given space filming the same exact scenes so you can get different perspectives and different angles and then they're all edited together smoothly so it's just like one long shot in this show there's clearly a lot of camera work going on so it loses even 
even within the mockumentary kind of like genre it doesn't even fit into mockumentary to me because it's there was too many it was too much manipulation of the point of view like it then they would have the confessionals and then like apparently right across in the same studio space um the mom is giving her confessional and then the daughter is giving her like it to me it just did not make any it, it was just so just what is this like it was just nothing to me made sense or provided what it was meant to provide there's so many examples of mockumentary like series tv shows that you could watch such as the burning Mac show uh curb your enthusiasm um the office one of the most popular uh um mockumentary tv series um parks and recreation like even kind of them breakable kimmy like a lot of these type of um uh shows that are mockumentaries they they try to keep the camera work to a minimum and actually show you the camera visibly moving around with the person because if you're shooting a documentary oftentimes that's exactly what it's going to be like so that part to me was extremely unrealistic i also could not get into like i said the culture that they have like the disrespect of the parents um it was like a scene where the maid was like vacuuming and just have their feet up like that to me i was just like ugh, i'm turned off i, I don't want to like it didn't it didn't it didn't come off as oh this is nice i would want to no, um, I didn't like how he repeatedly told his wife she was a bad mom. I thought that was weird. Me and my husband did actually watch the entire, you know, part. They, all the episodes they had up and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Um, it was just really, um, it wasn't for me. And, um, if you want to watch that type of show with that type of, rep with that type of representation of affluent Black Americans, the Bernie Mac show is a great example. He was famous in real life and famous in the world of the, of the mockumentary. He had a bunch of kids. He had a wife. They had a nice house in the suburbs. Um, the kids went to private schools. Like it was the same, pretty, the same premise, but it had soul and realism, and it was just a great show. Um, I don't, you know, you might want to watch that one and then compare them to the two so you can see what I mean. But this show lacked so much soul and depth it was so hollow it was just so like they so you could tell they took so much care and the wardrobe and the hairstylist and, like everything those kids had on was like on trend designer gucci down everything was just like even the little loops and the braids like everything was just like you could tell someone meticulously put together the image the package the aesthetic of this show um and then when it came to the writing and the plot line and the story arcs and the comedy even everything else was just shallow and flat i did not like it but that's just my personal opinion so getting to insecure season four episode two i have decided <laughs> to not review this episode by episode or even watch it episode by episode i've decided to wait till all of the episodes are streamable and then watch the show or should i say the series all the way through and then come back with a kind of idea because the short kind of pace that these that these episodes are kind of like formatted in i, I like I was so disappointed at the end of episode two. I was just like, okay, like I could have watched someone else's review on YouTube. I think that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm a I'm a part of this insecure uh, group on Facebook, and we were like obviously talking about what happened. And I don't remember the shows being this short as well as seeming like they just like cut off and like it doesn't have like a punch or like. I don't know it's hard to describe it i think i'm just gonna wait till everything is available and then watch it that way the show is not holding my attention however um i do think it's great in this episode that molly and andrew were able to have you know real conversation about how they're both feeling and hopefully they're able to um really talk about some of his apprehensions as well as why molly kind of is passive aggressive and they're able to lay the foundation for a good long-lasting friendship 
I don't see why Molly is so uncomfortable with Issa's relationship with Condola. Um, they have to work together for the time being and why not have fun? Why not laugh? Why not joke? Why not have it be, you know, lighthearted and, and, and tolerable and, and warm? If you can, if you have to work with this person, why make it as awkward as you can? Um, as far as Lawrence asking Issa not to talk about their relationship, I mean, I guess I understand like the premise of I want her to get to know me for me on my own and not from you. I, I, I get that. But at the same time, it's kind of like you can't really control that. And for him to like pull up on her like that, I didn't really, I don't know. I didn't really see the point of that. The sex scenes, I didn't particularly care for Molly's sex scene. I thought it was, again, too short. Um, And I just, it, it was so short to the point where I don't even understand why it was in the episode like they could have just alluded to it instead of whatever they decided to show us like him slapping her ass from all the way up here we didn't we don't we don't need to see that but okay um now as far as Issa having uh sex with uh tsa bay and the above head position and he's like you know press my booty button i i i was just talking to my husband about that i think that was more so to show um just to give visibility to men who like to have play while they're having sex. I think that's what that was about. So, I mean, I guess that's important. But again, outside of the visibility of that, I don't really know what the point of that scene was. So that's kind of how I feel about the show as of now. Um, I'm not like drawn in and I'm not just like, oh my gosh, like this, this, this is so much better than season three because I didn't like season three, but those are my thoughts. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you stay safe, stay protected. Talk to someone if you're feeling depressed or overwhelmed because um, I'm starting to hear a lot about people um, succumbing to their depression around this time um, and taking themselves out. And that is like so, so heartbreaking to me that people are not able to get past this point. So please, please, please talk to someone if you need to. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time and take care.